Oh no. Can you hear me, Jimmy? Yeah, I, I can hear you, but we don't oh, have a camera. Oh. Okay. Now we got a visual. Hey. Great. <laughs> What's I'm up? Sorry about that. Oh my gosh. Jeez. I'm like yeah. all over the place this morning. <laughs> This this is always the most interesting part of the show, Make, making sure that it's on. Making you know? sure that you can actually. Connect, <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, coming on the program on a Monday. I, I would feel like working for an NBA team Monday would be like the the busiest day. You know, it it definitely is a busy day, especially because it's a game day against the Celtics tonight. So oh wow, okay. a lot to do for sure, but never um, impossible to meet with my good friend JVK. So oh, okay, <laughs> cool. I uh, you know I I'm sure you've been asked this question tons of times uh, living in Indianapolis, and we can just set the record straight now. Uh, were you named after Peyton Manning? <laughs> I was not. And I do get that question all the time. I surprisingly was right before he kind of blew up and became who he was. Um, so I'm a 98 baby, um, uh, okay. a little bit before, like right before Peyton Manning. But sometimes I just say yes, because it's easier to answer yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, P-E-Y, you, you gotta... Yeah, you would think. I'm surprisingly named after an actress in a movie and her name was Peyton. And so that was my parents thought process surprisingly so <laughs> not a Colts fan though I am not I mean you have to be living in Indy but I am a diehard Packers fan so okay and was it just a parent that got you hooked on the Packers yeah. or what okay yep so my mom and her whole side of her family is from Milwaukee so naturally I was uh born and raised a uh, Packers fan <laughs> I didn't really have a choice <laughs> are you a Bucks fan by extension the Pacers have played them quite a bit already this year <laughs> they have they have and um I'm not a Bucks fan only only NBA fan uh of the Pacers right now so <laughs> okay uh the Packers appeal to a lot of folks I think because it's uh owned by uh, a group of folks uh, have you been to a game yet tickets are kind of hard to come by <laughs> I have. I went to my first game uh, this year and it was actually last year. Now it's 2024. Um, it was the Packers Chiefs game cool. and it was my first time at Lambeau. And let me tell you, it lives up to the hype, especially if there's yeah. no, uh, which there was, and especially if they beat a team like the Chiefs. So it was pretty electric. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers are like the two legendary quarterbacks. Who are you taking if you had to pick? Oh my gosh, Brett Favre, <laughs> for sure. Um, but honestly, I am a huge Jordan Love fan. He is starting to really prove himself. Um, he was under a lot of pressure this year and he stepped it up. And I mean, they're the youngest team right now to go to the playoffs and or yeah. I think in the whole NFL. So it's really, really cool keeping up with them uh, right now. So yeah. Um, well, I can recall real quick, if you'll indulge me, I went to a Michigan game uh, at Notre Dame with Joey. And oh. you know, those those tickets are hard to come by. And uh, with them playing in the national championship game, do you have someone to root for tonight? Uh, oh, my game? gosh. I'm just because everyone's kind of against Michigan, I feel like. I'm just going <laughs> to play Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Well, um. I think a lot of people that are against Tom Green also have a disdain for <laughs> Michigan because like he's married to their sister, right? Oh, so oh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, Didn't you so, about that. so there's that end of the thing. Um, did you ever, did you play uh, high school sports growing up? I did not actually. So I'm the only one in my family that didn't. So all of my siblings grew up playing soccer. Um, my dad played basketball at Hanover, um, but I actually did oh. music and dance but that did not defer me from loving sports so huge sports family always grew up watching soccer watching basketball um, and someone who graduated from Butler University obviously basketball is ingrained in, in your yeah. veins when you're, when you're there too so it's hard not to love Indiana basketball in general so um how would you describe going to a game at Hinkle Fieldhouse Oh, absolute electricity. I mean, I was just talking with my dad the other day about, um, I think it was in 2017, my freshman year, Kamar Baldwin um, had a step back three and beat Villanova uh, on a buzzer beater. And so that was the game that I was like, I knew I was going to fall in love with Butler basketball. So, and I mean, watching Keelan Martin go to the Pacers for a while too, obviously sparked, you know, something that sparked my interest. So just being born and raised in Indiana, you have to love basketball so <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> uh, I don't really have a choice there. Um, no, no, I might be wrong here, and I apologize to uh, folks who have been, may have been part of the program. But does Butler have football, or is it only? They do. Basketball? They okay. do have a football team. Um, that is a very common question. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but definitely more of a basketball school than a football school, I would say. <laughs> okay, well, it, it see, I come from UND, a Division two school where. We might win our conference and then we get to the playoffs and it's a first round elimination and that's yeah. fine, but <laughs> like, I'm just not that invested in, in college football, uh, the way it goes. Um, did you say, uh, you might have said this already siblings. Yeah. Those? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the youngest of four, yeah, um, four. all played soccer. Um, some of them in college as well. So, um, definitely yeah. the only <laughs> one who didn't continue to pursue sports, um, for myself, but as a career, um, I mean, I've always loved basketball. My dad, like I said, played at Hanover, um, mm. before or after Joey's before, or after Joey's dad, I can't remember, but, um, oh, okay. so yeah. kind of connected on, on that as well. So, um, gotta love small school basketball, <laughs> <laughs> uh, similar personality to your siblings. Would you say? I would honestly say day and night different, which is so funny. You'd think, uh, we didn't all come from the same parents if you met us. So we're all very, <laughs> very, very different. Um, super close. Um, but if this gives you any example, my brother lives out in Wyoming, so he's very, uh, naturey, likes to just be out, you know, outdoors all day long. And, um, so not that I don't, but you know, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's more that type of person and my sister's very uh loves to travel free spirit um you know just kind of wild and fun so yeah we're all a little bit different uh but very close so um what were your parents jobs growing up um my dad was a dentist uh he's retired now um so he just comes to all the pacers games uh, as his job <laughs> okay um and my mom is actually a stay-at-home mom so I grew up on a farm uh, and so she was always taking care of our animals and the kids and the dogs and all the things and so um but now she on the side actually trains dogs so mm. she loves to do it she's super involved in our church and with our family so even though she's not employed she's always working <laughs> she's yeah. a busy, busy lady with six grandkids four kids um you know and just kind of keeping the being the glue of the family so well See, I, my mom was a stay at home is a stay at home mom still, okay. still taking care of me from time to time. Um, <laughs> they all, doesn't what, matter uh, how old you are, you always need your parents, right? <laughs> um, I don't want to make you too emotional, but I mean, it, being a mom is a twenty four seven three sixty five job. What does your mom mean to you, being around her all the time like that? Oh man, my my mom is my inspiration. Uh, she's yeah. my absolute world, and I wouldn't change her being a stay at home mom for anything. It just made me value. Um, value my mother and I'm I was I'm the youngest of four and I'm very very far apart in age from my oldest sibling and so my parents had me when they were much older um so watching your parents age at 25 um watching them age so quickly at the ages that they're at it really makes you never want to take a single moment for granted spending time with them um and just thanking them for everything that that they've done for me my entire life I'm very very grateful to have the relationship with them that I do and uh, I live five minutes away from them and I probably always will. So. <laughs> cool. Good deal. Uh, your, your dad being a dentist, uh, were you not allowed to have candy? Like, <laughs> <laughs> So you'd be surprised. We were definitely allowed to have candy, but it would uh, here and there go missing. And the only culprit would be the one you would think it wouldn't be, which was my dad. He always ate all of our Halloween candy. So, oh. so before Jimmy Kimmel came up with that old bit, your dad was ahead of the curve, right? He's been doing it for years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just asking, I, I lucked out and didn't wear braces. Might have to down the line. Uh, some adults do. Uh, did you have to wear braces? I did and not for a very long time. Luckily I had a retainer before and after that, okay. um, they throw it away by accident and never got another one. Um, but yeah, I had braces, I think seventh grade, most of the year. Cool. Um, so yeah. yeah, blessing and a curse having a dad as a dentist. <laughs> um, you are a digital marketing, uh, coordinator with the retail part of the program with the Indiana Pacers. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me, how did you, how did, what led to this job with you? Yeah, yeah, awesome question. Um, so originally, uh, after I graduated from college, I entered the tech realm. 
So I studied journalism and digital media production, um, which was the communications college of communications at Butler. Mm. Um, but a lot of that was all intertwined with sports. Um, so I did a lot of sports classes, sports media, um, sports analysis, everything like that. Um, but once I graduated, um, I applied to a very well-known company here in Indy, which was Salesforce. Mm. Um, everybody loves it, loved it, um, wanted to be there. Uh, graduating in the middle of COVID, you also don't really know what to do with your life. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> do with your life so um i applied there uh started working there fell in love with the tech industry um unfortunately got caught off in the 10 percent of layoffs last march and then uh was actively looking for jobs and pacers is just something you the pacers sports and entertainment organization is something you always keep your eyes on um especially mm -hmm. with the team looking the way that they've been looking this year um anytime a job application shows up i would have a notification for it um and so as soon as i was laid off i was lucky enough to see this opening for digital marketing coordinator uh kind of entailed everything that i've ever wanted in a, in a job sports being in indiana retail fashion merchandise marketing um and kind of putting it all together and it's a new job so i'm still navigating a lot of the waters and what this looks like, trying new things, not being, you know, afraid to take risks. So um, applied for it. I had uh, four interviews and a creative project. So while I was actually working at another job, I was applying for this job. Um, and then it came to fruition six months later. So it was a very tedious process. Um, and I couldn't be happier to have landed where I'm at now. So I'm very, All very right. happy to be here. Um, what are like the... Uh expectations and responsibilities for you day to day. yeah well I'll kind of give you like a a, a day in the life of what it looks like if, if we don't have a game day and if we do have a game day so sure. um typically there's um there's a whole digital team at the Pacers and I'm a small part of that so myself and one other person kind of run the team store social media so mm -hmm. that's the Pacers team store um, Instagram X and Facebook so pretty much we do all of the photo shoots we'll find some people either around the office or some friends take some pictures of them um, upload them and then we'll kind of put them towards the SMS marketing email marketing um, game night specials put them all over social media tag the products kind of show everyone what's the latest and greatest with like city edition or all stars right around the corner so we really want to highlight some of that stuff. So for example, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm taking a lot of pictures. I'm seeing what's new in the team store and how I can make my content creative, fun, unique. And like I said, a lot of this is brand new. We're trying a lot of new things. Um, there's only, I think, seven or eight um, store team store social medias for like all of the NBA. So it's a high mm. market. Um, surprisingly, I was didn't didn't know that there was no team stores anywhere and so um or even they don't don't always post about it so we're really leveraging the indie market right now especially with um how the team is looking so um mm -hmm. on game day for example today i get to sleep in a little bit which is nice but um in the office today kind of planning what content i'm searching for tonight so for example the team is wearing their association jerseys which are our white jerseys so maybe I'll try and find some fans in white jerseys, uh, take some pictures of them, put them on social media, um, get fans cheering, maybe make a reel or two. Um, but it's a really, really unique, cool, fun job that is different every day. Um, and I'm so lucky to experience what it's like living in the unexpected. So always expect the unexpected here. So um, game day, yeah, just kind of preparing for later, going to check out a camera, um, kind of plan plan what I want the the night to look like. So. Cool. Um, I knew I liked you with uh, your communication <laughs> background. I didn't realize you were in that realm. Uh, and that's that's one thing that I wanted to talk to you about. I guess there's no single degree that prepares you for any singular job anymore. It seems like everyone is a jack of all trades. But what would you recommend as far as like skill sets to develop uh, with 2023 and, and marketing? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I've always said and just the way that I was raised is character comes first. Um, just being a good person, um, spreading joy, spreading compassion, spreading love. Um, that's going to get you really far in life no matter where you go. You can learn technical skills. Uh, you mm. can learn social media. You can learn a lot of marketing skills from a lot of the people you surround yourself with. But I just think being a good person first uh, is what matters the most. And uh, that's going to get you a lot of connections. It's going to um, make a lot of friends. Uh, you're going to go really far in life. If 
make you just um, stand out in a good way, uh, just by, you know, spreading joy and networking and making connections and um, sure. just being outgoing and kind. So I think that's where, where I would say is a good place to start. You can't learn compassion and you can't learn uh, how to be a good person, but you can learn a lot of different marketing skills. Um, I'm, I didn't study marketing, but I'm learning marketing every single day. Um, but just by, you know, being willing to talk to a person who say, Hey, this person can teach me a lot. Like if you're, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So okay. I think I I'm kind of learning that every day here too. So that's what I would say. Well, and I'll admit I, I'm an old soul. You know, I like these long form interviews where you, you kind of have to pay a little bit of attention. Uh, in 2024, I feel like people's attention spans are really short. Like, is that part of, is that one of the things you think about when creating stuff? Absolutely. That's a great question. And honestly, it is a daily challenge because, for example, I, I put together a video of this um, kid's first time at a Pacers game the other day. And we were going back and forth with the whole team of what the caption should be because we're all scrolling, scrolling so fast. And, and mm -hmm. as someone who is also on social media very frequently, I can scroll past something so fast. And so what's going to catch my eye immediately? What's going to get someone hooked? Um, the copy, so the caption, uh, an overview of what the video is going to entail. What's the cover of this video? Um, are we going to have captions in the video? So it's like, there is so much to consider. And again, it's you're learning every single day what works and what doesn't work right now. So we're in an yeah. ever evolving uh, world. But that's the cool thing about marketing is that it's always changing and you just <sighs> have to learn how to change with it. <laughs> yeah. 10 seconds or less. Tick tock. People. Right? That's, that's what it's oh, about. Yeah. All my videos are <laughs> under one minute. You know, that can't, can't be one, one on one. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, for folks that remember semi pro uh, the Flint tropics borrowed the Indiana Pacers uh, stripe down, down the side. Uh, I'm asking you as someone that works on the retail side uh, and I'm biased, the Pacers do have the best jerseys uh, in the NBA, the best variations. Do you have a, a favorite one? <laughs> oh man, absolutely. I, and this is going to sound pretty biased to you, but I love city edition and I hate to even be like promoting the city edition jerseys right now because we are sold out completely and we can't get any more, um, but they're so unique. And I work on the same team as the designer and he just has worked tireless hours. Um, and he's an incredible guy who, who, it has done the spray paint by, you know, finger, like he draws everything uh, by hand. And so he's a, I know how much work went into it and how much they thought of the community and the culture around here to create city edition, uh, just keeping our community in mind. Um, so I think city edition has a lot of meaning behind it, not just the colors, not just the fact that it's the full all black uniform. Um, so I think those have got to be my favorite. It's really brought the community together in a cool way. So is the artist from here too? Or... Um, I actually don't know if he's from here, um, yeah. but he works here. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Uh, I really like the court, how the city edition court turned out. Um, and I, I'm sure I've seen it done, but is it, it's like puzzle pieces, right? Putting those things yeah. together. Yeah. So they, they have some, um, like panel views. Um, I'm trying to think of the word where you kind of like watch it being put together really quickly. Um, we have some yeah. of those videos too. So we have three different courts right now. So we have the Pacers main court and then we have the IST court, which won't be shown anymore. Um, just because obviously the end season tournament is over. That's the one that was bright, bright blue that you could see from, uh, outer space. And <laughs> then we have the city edition court, which is my personal favorite. It's kind of like that light gray tone with the spray, spray paint and splatter around the corner. Uh, that that tends to be everybody's favorite too it's really unique and different cool um one of the reasons people are digging the pacers right now i think that the team is very likable uh have you met the players yet what can you say I, the players? i have not um i actually had my first somewhat interaction with Obi the other day uh, I was taking a picture of a fan uh, who was wearing a little wordmark t-shirt so a, like a bright gold t-shirt that I I think it said Obi Toppin on the back and they were court almost courtside and I was like hey do you mind if I take a picture you posted on social media standing there and all of a sudden there I see Obi just running right by me <laughs> and he starts signing the kids shirt signing hats and just such a world-class nice guy um, there are people here who have met the player before and I've heard nothing but awesome things just you know family people um, a, such a young team that just looks great together work together different type of energy I think than we've that we've ever had at, at the Pacers so um, haven't had a chance to meet them um, but I think 
maybe in the future when we do some shoots of new jerseys, like city edition jerseys, or, you know, if we get a new jersey in and need the players to to hop in some stuff, uh, I might have that opportunity, which would be, which would be cool. Cool. Um, I know that you're not working all the time. Um, and we've gone out on occasion with, with a group. Uh, what are the best bars in Indy, in your opinion? Oh, <laughs> Good call. Honestly, that when we went to the rooftop bar, that was the first time I'd ever been there. So that fun. fun. That yeah. one was fun. Uh, I don't make my way to Fountain Square too often, but my go-to, and this this might not be a crowd pleaser, but it's my favorite, is 16-bit. So I just think free cover. Uh, there's two two floors. It's wide open space. Uh, great service. Uh, I just love it there. It's easy to get to. It's in the middle of everything. Arcade games, uh, ski ball. They just put a slide in. I think it's just a, a good place where kind of everyone ends the night and and gathers together and, and has some fun. So I think that's probably my, my favorite bar is 16 bit, no doubt. Okay. Uh, plenty of delicious choices in the concession stand. Uh, if you have your choice, what, what are you getting? <laughs> like concession stand here at Gamebridge on like. Yeah. Games. Yeah. I would definitely say they're pretzels. The soft pretzels are bigger than my head and they give you a lot of cheese, which is key. <laughs> so okay, I would cool. say that, no doubt. How much is the ice cream? No, do you know the price? The oh, I don't, it's probably expensive, but um, we actually get free soft serve on game nights when we're working in the media room, so. That's a perk, yeah. It's a perk. Um, we love soft have serve. you covered uh, a game in any other arena where you get to test their food out, see what the spread is? I haven't. So I don't get to travel with the team. If I could bring the team store with me, I absolutely would. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I do most of my work here in house. And that's also what makes the team store super special is um, everything is here. So everything that you buy online uh, or order online, we do, we package everything in house. Um, we do everything here, which is really unique. And I don't think any other NBA team does that. Um, so that's also what's really cool about, about this, but no, I haven't traveled to any, any other stadium and tried their cool. food yet um maybe when i have <laughs> some more time <laughs> <laughs> well when uh me and the boys joey and johnny were in uh vegas we we went into the clothing stores and tried on all the expensive stuff we didn't buy anything had to try it sure, on sure. um, i'm just thinking of joey being uh you know 6 10 6 11 do you guys factor in that like tall folks are gonna want to wear the material and we have to make it look good for them too <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I don't do any of the the buying, but um, oh, I do okay. promote all of the all of the um, products in the store and all of the merchandise. But we have everything from extra small to three XL, um, and so we try and accommodate to to everybody and make sure everyone can feel good on what they're wearing and look good in what they're wearing. And we've got youth, we have women's, um, we have unisex, uh, we've got just about everything that that you could want in a team store. So, and we're always. Cool trying to trying to try new things keep some vintage in the store always keep the jersey people always ask us uh where is all the the reggie miller stuff where's reggie miller can, can we buy reggie miller and he actually owns the rights to his name uh and so wow. we don't sell anything reggie miller so for for the people who keep <laughs> asking us it's a no can do unfortunately yeah look on ebay i guess now for, for I, that right yeah um, um <laughs> let me see what else um I know that, you know, you're, you're happy at your job right now. Uh, but is there a transition that you want to go to at some point down the road? Man, I, right now I'm just looking to, to grow in the exact spot that I'm in. Um, I want to strengthen my strengths. I want to keep connecting with, uh, this awesome team that I'm a part of and learning more about the Pacer sports and entertainment organization. And I haven't even been on long enough to experience what it's like working for the fever as well. So I I'll have that opportunity when it's fever season two, which is really, really exciting. And I'm really looking forward to that. So, uh, being so fresh here and falling in love with it as quickly as I have, uh, I have, no, I guess, intentions of uh, going anywhere else or leaving this specific role. Um, it's it's pretty spectacular, and I feel incredibly blessed to be doing what I do every day. So, When I was at CBS Sports 1430, sometimes I would hear myself on the radio, and I don't know, I would get giddy. I'm like, that's me. Um, <laughs> how does it feel to see something that you've created be on a, an official team feed and for it to get some attention. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, it, it a couple of days ago was the first time. Uh, so, I mean, wow. I get to post, I get to post on the team store frequently and we have really dedicated fans and followers there. 
Um, and I've loved watching it grow. I love seeing that engagement and interaction, but um, something really cool that just happened a couple nights ago was the same story about um, the kid who um, came to his first Pacers game. His name is Levi. Uh, he actually reached out to us on on Twitter and told us that he had got some really cool gear for Christmas and got a big homemade ticket for his first Pacers game. And his dad's a huge Pacers fan. And so we really wanted to make this, um, we really wanted to make Levi's experience incredibly special, um, make a Pacers fan for life, right? So he drove two and a half hours here uh two I think it was two nights ago um at the not the Celtics game but the game before that and so we put together the team store put together all these gifts for him of merchandise uh he got to meet Boomer he got to go down courtside uh he got to meet Ben Shepard after the game which was awesome um so I'm kind of taking video content of this the entire night and then just putting it together and this has probably been one of the most rewarding things that I've ever uh, done. It wasn't for me. Uh, it was to make this kid's experience the most memorable thing uh, of his life. And he awesome. now is a forever Pacers fan from, a you know, as a quote from his dad. And he said he was cheering so loud. I'm surprised his voice is still here. Um, and <laughs> Levi was an awesome, awesome kid. And so I put that video together and the Pacers actually posted it on their Instagram and did a collaboration with um, Gamebridge Fieldhouse in the team store, which was really, really cool. And I got to see that um, pregame as well up on the big screen, up on the Jumbotron. And, and I was just standing there in awe and my boss was taking a video thinking I was going to cry. And I, I did. So <laughs> there you go. Um, in the couple minutes we have left, Peyton, um, how can yes, people reach flying. out? Huh? So the time uh, is flying by when we get Yes, together. it is. Um, uh, in the time that we have left, how can people reach out and uh, connect with you if they want yeah, to? Yeah, absolutely. I am always looking for new connections, uh, looking to hear people's story um, and just kind of, um, yeah, connect in any way, shape or form. So you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Peyton Thompson. Feel free to connect with me there. It might need a little bit of updating. So I'm sorry <laughs> if that's old. Uh, you're also welcome to email me. Um, it's just pthompson at pacers.com. Um, and feel free to connect with me on social media. And I'll always be posting on Pacers Team Store Instagram. So um, and our other social media platforms, but that's usually where I'm the most active. So any any of those ways, you are so welcome to connect and reach out. Okay. And for all the latest fits you know i'm looking for the, the latest fits where can people find the pacers stuff uh so anything pacers uh go online at pacersteamstore.com uh i tag all of our products on the social media as well so you can go on there and see what's the latest and greatest and right now it's all things all-star uh as it's right around the corner so we have some city edition left not too much but um cool. yeah so so go take a peek and see what strikes your interest we've got some cool stuff in there all right. Um, again, the half an hour has flown by that I committed to. It sure so has. Uh, we'll have to do a follow up once fever season rolls around uh, and document some more. But uh, Peyton, let me say, uh, I haven't known you for very long, but uh, you're always a bright light and the Pacers made the right choice. Bringing uh, thank you. So, you. Thank you. Awesome. I'm the lucky one to I'm, I'm so lucky to know you and uh, continue growing this friendship. So I appreciate you asking me to be here today. It was a blast. All right, uh, folks, to check out this episode and all others with the program, make your way over to uh, at JBK on air on all social media platforms, linktree.com slash JBK on air for everything related to the show. Plus, donate to the program with the link in the description. Until next time, have a great day and a better tomorrow. <laughs>